morning and welcome to today's video. First proper ride out since Vietnam. I'm in Lycra and everything. It's about 10 degrees, feels about two degrees. I'm out in the Surrey Hills heading towards Dorking to meet up with someone a lot of you will recognize. Tom who won the spin on these wheels from the competition and his dad Neil. They're gonna show me some of their local roads. It's gonna end up being quite a big day for me because it takes me an hour to get out. Now I've pretty much had a week off the bike so I'm not sure how my leg is gonna be. So far so good, can't feel my hands. One great thing about riding today, it's almost Christmas, so empty roads. Welcome to Dorking at Christmas. Hello, it's, been, well. it's been about a year. It has. How are you both? Very well, thank good, you very good. well indeed. Where are we going? We are going to head over to um, over towards Rygate. We're going to head over to, for a cup of coffee and a slice of cake at um, a bike shop called Maison de Velo over in Rygate, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, thought we'd take a bit of a meandering route out towards Nudie Gateway, Stanhill, Norwood, try and avoid some of the water that's on the roads, and uh, yeah, go and have a cup of coffee. Well, uh, I'm really tired from Vietnam, so please don't drop me. Uh, be kind. How are the wheels doing? They're looking so clean. I gave them a wipe down last night. <laughs> be honest these roads are amazing these guys live in Dorking so they know all the secret routes when I do a ride in Surrey Hills it's always kind of crap these guys from the center of Dorking two roads away make a turn and you're on these beautiful country lanes how do I not know about this legs feeling good this is exactly what I needed puncture oh it's just like Vietnam he's hoping we've got a tube that fits. so some of you might remember from uh, last time I rode with these guys Tom's got type 1 diabetes so he has to keep checking his blood sugar every now and then to make sure he's not going too low or hypoglycemic he's got this app that does it all for him what are you having a nightmare what's this going on mate? Longer to be there. I would make fun of you but this is exactly what happened to me in Vietnam which is why I ended up riding a road tire the whole way this is the second time it's happened to me in, um, not quite consecutive rides with him, but I was convinced that I brought the right inner tubes with me this time, and obviously I didn't. So this is an app that shows you your blood sugar? That's basically um, a phone app which is acting like an artificial or bionic pancreas. So the phone app takes a reading of his blood sugar levels from a sensor that's in his arm, and works out how much insulin he might or might not need according to that level of blood sugar and how many grams of carbohydrate he has on board that we calculate and it sends a message to a pump that's attached to him that um, basically delivers insulin automatically. How cool is that? That is really clever. This is cutting edge. This is it. All right, just give yourself one point here. Do you have to tell the app to give it, give you some so, then? Sometimes yeah. we have to because it's not foolproof in any way. Um, it's a really complex algorithm, but the body is random, the body's complex. That's why they've never actually managed to um, Make it fully automated, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's getting there, it's getting there. So back on the road again, almost at our cafe stop. I'll tell you one thing that's really weird, riding a bike that hasn't got bags on. It's the most responsive bike I've ever ridden. I'm going into corners and then nearly riding into the fence. It is refreshing though, really nice to be on a quick bike. This is my winter bike now. Sugar's a bit high at the moment. 14.2. Um, what, at what point do you worry? About now. If I, if we weren't going to go and ride 20k back, I'd be throwing lots of insulin at him. But as it is, I'm going to give a little bit, knowing that he'll hopefully ride some of the blood sugar off as well. So exercising helps regulate when yeah. it's high. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Interesting. And what you don't want is a low when you're exercising because that's like a, if you can imagine what a severe bonk is like when yeah. you get a bonk it's hard bike. to claw it back even when you don't have diabetes it's hard to get right. on top of when you started bonking right? yeah, yeah, yeah. when you start going low then that's when the jelly babies come out yeah quickly and lots of them as we go along we just throw jelly baby after jelly baby after jelly baby five <laughs> grams of carbohydrate for each one do you like jelly babies this is an app that we use called Carbs and Cows. Basically, whenever we eat some, Thomas eats something, we try and find the equivalent of it, a picture, and it then tells us um, approximately how many grams of carbohydrates according to the portion size. That's if we can't actually calculate it from the nutrition information on the side of the packet. Yeah. It's the way of trying to guesstimate and count the carbs because as cyclists, we all love carbohydrate. We love to carb load because carbohydrate gives us energy, but carbohydrate turns into sugar. Yeah. And for somebody with diabetes, they need insulin to 
help move that sugar from the bloodstream into the cells. Well, you've been doing an extremely good job, both of you. Uh, it's a little bit high. Recording but... <laughs> all of this. What's the longest ride you've done so far? 160. 160 k's. Wotton Bassett in Wiltshire to Weybridge in Surrey. Quite lumpy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's no problem for him though, he's so light. He'd, he'd regularly ride people off his wheel on the climb. It will come down. We've just stopped yeah. because um, Thomas's blood sugar has gone very high from that huge slab of chocolate cake and, um, and hot chocolate he had, so he now needs a bit of insulin. Was it worth it though? It was worth it, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> what we do is we, we give insulin to get him down and we give jelly babies to bring him up and yeah. that's just that's how life is. But yeah. Just from a press of a button on there? Just from the press of the yeah. button on here, it sends a message to his pump and his pump delivers insulin through a tube, so pretty cool. How long have you had that system? Six months, wasn't it? Yeah. Before then, we'd have had to, I'd, I'd have been fumbling underneath to get a, uh, the pump, yeah. which is attached to the tube. Whereas at least this is tubeless, and I can do it. I can actually do it from my own phone if yeah. I wanted to, but I've done it on his. A lot easier. Fantastic ride today. We couldn't have asked for better conditions. I'm feeling the cold, but really nothing to complain about. Heading back to Tom's now for a mince pie because it's nearly Christmas, and I've got a fairly long trek back home. Hopefully, traffic-free. This will get me home. It needs to. You've got a big climb ahead. Oh, so this is your device? Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitoring or CGM sensor. That has a little soft needle that sits in Thomas's flesh and sends a signal which is picked up by his phone and an app on his phone and that translates that into his, um, his current blood sugar. So on his phone we can see at any one time what his Blood sugar is as he starts eating. As he eats that giant, bit. yeah. <laughs> his blood sugar is 9.4. He's coming down pretty fast because I gave him some insulin earlier when he was a bit higher. And what you can see there is the wavy line is his blood sugar over the past 24 hours, which is quite spiky, um, but that's indicative. Certainly over there, that's indicative of him doing some exercise and eating a huge slab of chocolate cake and um, having a hot chocolate. He also wears an insulin pump. Um, which delivers insulin to him according to what we tell him, what we tell it, or um, increasingly we're able to, to allow it to make decisions on its own and act as a, an automated artificial pancreas. So the guys um, who are racing Team as professionals, yes, yeah. so Nova Nordisk, so all team, those guys. Team Nova Nordisk. Are they uh, using the same system? Yes, yeah, so they, they use Dexcom G6, so they, they each have one of those things in their arms um, or somewhere on their body, probably not in their arm. Um, and so they are able to see throughout the race and you know, there was, I don't know if you know that there were four of them in the break and um, all day in the break at Milan San Remo this year. One not too days, shabby. No, no, not too shabby. <laughs> they compete at a pretty high level. Yeah. And what they're doing all the time is they're constantly monitoring their blood sugar and if they need to, um, if they need some sugar because they start to go low then obviously they need to, to fuel a bit more than you know, um, other riders. And sometimes they might have to drop back to the team car, I guess, and have a, a shot of insulin to bring them down. Because if they're going too high, then they want to bring it down and get it back under control. They don't let it get in their way. Neither does Tom. <laughs> well, <laughs> clearly. No, clearly not. Well, absolute pleasure riding with Tom and his dad, Neil. I'm now full of mince pies. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I thought it would be nice to give a little bit of insight into what Tom is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and I think it's safe to say that he's an absolute badass doing 100k bike rides while having to make sure his blood sugar isn't going too high or low. It makes the everyday struggles that people without diabetes have to deal with seem pretty insignificant. So I've just got the last climb of the day out of the way. Pretty much downhill for me all the way home now. Time for a little bit of a rest. Fill our faces with mince pies for the next couple of days. Might do a bike ride on Christmas Day so stay tuned and as always thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon.